Hey guys, welcome back. Or Bomb here, bringing you another episode of our PTCGO live content videos. On today, people, today that was a flawless intro, dude. I love how some days I do it really well, and other days I just really just don't. But anyways, uh, today, people, today we're playing some Bocephalon. Uh, you guys know that Bocephalon is one of my favorite decks, just like ever, like I've played in tournaments and stuff like that. I've done really successfully with Bocephalon, and I have this brand new list I want to show with you guys. Before we get into the video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, share all that good jazz. Uh, remember, answer a common question a day. As well as leaving a like gives you a chance to win. And not only a couple of codes, thanks to our lovely sponsors at Guardian Gaming, which I'm going to put on the screen right now. Yeah, check them out. Uh, but also, booster boxes. Because we're going to be getting, getting a few booster boxes thanks to our lovely sponsors to give away to you guys. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Because they told me they're sending me some, but I haven't gotten the mail yet. So I don't know the deals to that. But we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> Bocephalon GX is here. We all know what Bocephalon GX does. This is my updated list that plays welders and kind of like cards to deal with the current meta. My idea with this deck list, right, is that in a meta that is focused on these big tag team Pokemon uh, that give up three prizes, maybe we can skew the price rate a little bit by giving us a GX Pokemon that can take Okos on those tag teams. That's the idea. So before we get into the video, do all the shenanigans that you guys know. Remember, 75 likes does equal a next day upload. We'll see what happens. So we are playing three blounds. I'm playing three blounds because I want to play a stretcher. Stretcher gives me a little bit more versatility as far as like not only getting back up the stuff from the discard pile, but maybe some other useful Pokemon, such as Marsh Shadow to use Lit Loose. I am playing two of these. I am playing one Mew because for ever since people start uploading that, that people start uploading that Weezing deck, which I guess if you guys want me to do, let me know in the comments down below. Also, yeah, as far as common questions as they go, um, what's the deck you want to see me play next? What is a that's gonna be one because that's my general question, right? I need another question though. Um Hmm. Hem. I don't know. What's a good question? Ooh, I have an idea. Let me. This ask. This ask like a really interesting question. What's an ability, like specifically an ability, that you want in our current format? Like just if, whether you make it up, uh, which would be really cool. I'm interested to see what cool abilities you guys can make up. Or uh, what's an ability that you want to see come back to help this format or whatever you guys want to say, right? Uh, everyone has their opinions about how they like different formats and stuff like that. So I'd like to see your opinions on that because we just got Bench Barrier back. So I figured it'd be a nice thing though. Nice little segue. We have Bench Barrier here with Mew. Mew also has the attack side power. Could sometimes put things in range for a color synergy. So not too bad. Um, but anyways, it's because Weezing is a thing and this deck suffers against spread just because you have so many Pokemon on your bench. Like this is a very board present deck, which is why I like this deck a lot. Especially like if you consider next meta, and not only does this deck not really suffer from rotation, but it also gains cards as well as has a board present, which means that it doesn't suffer that much from cards like Reset Stamp. Um, so that's why I like this deck a lot. It's kind of like my play now, see if it does well, because I know it'll do well in the future kind of thing. But I'm pretty sure this deck will do well right now. We're testing it right now for for sake, for goodness sake anyway. So who, who cares, right? We got four Poipoles. I like the Spit Poison one. Sometimes that poison does put things in range. Not super interesting to look at my prizes most of the time. As well as a not gonna Adele, because charging up, turning point, psychic attacker, you know the drill, you know how it is. Um, and of course, one Lele. This is a card that I'm always back and forth about adding or keeping or removing. Um, you can you could go either way with this. It is one of those things where like when you play so many Ultra Balls and Nest Balls, it just feels wrong not playing Lele. We have Welder in this deck too, as well as Guzma. Uh, so it's nice to be able to have those on command when you have cards like Lele. But Lele comes with its own risk. It's a non-attacker uh, most of the time. You can attack with it thanks to cards like Welder. But like for the most part, you're not attacking with Lele. And uh, it just becomes a liability in some matchups. So that's why Lele is kind of like back and forth on me. But regardless, it's not, it's still a great card. Um, four B strings, you can't go below four in this deck because you the whole thing is land B string, win the game, right? <laughs> four treasures, uh, one stretcher. Ooh. Oh, I thought I was getting a phone call. Four ultra balls, one heat factory. We are playing Lysander Labs in this deck list. Now, Lysander Labs is actually a really cool idea. And I do want to give a shout out to Gumball for it um, because. First of all, that's my boy. Um, hopefully we can get some games done with that guy. Some games recorded with that guy. He's a really good player. Uh, he's done, He has had very good uh, results in tournaments. But uh, Lysander Labs is a good way to deal with spell tags immediately. It's a good way to deal with Choice Band, obviously. Um, good way to deal with guard, uh, Guardian's um, Ultra Beast. Ultra Beast Fairy Charm. The one that, yeah, the Fairy Charm Ultra Beast one. There's a lot of tools in this format that could annoy... Um, they could annoy uh, Blacephalon. So instead of playing Field Blower and just let them attach another one, I figured Lysander Labs is kind of like an immediate 
an immediate like you can slap down life center labs and immediately take action amount um, um with it and then if they bump the stadium whatever if they don't bump the stadium that means there's no tools so it's it's kind of like a field blower it doesn't get rid of two tools in the sense that like field blower does but it does let you take immediate action against decks that are playing tools it's less it's less of a um react it's 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 it takes care of the job right so if guardian has a has an ultra beast an ultra beast fairy charm in front of it you could play down life center labs and attack it it'd be the same effect of getting of using a field blower on it um so if that makes any sense i think life center labs is better for that reason not to mention stadiums are always good in this deck we're also playing two viridian forest because we are playing welder no ultra space in this deck list ultra space is a fifth stadium if you want to play it five stadiums or six stadium technically because we are playing five right now uh, it feels like a lot <laughs> i'm not gonna lie uh ultra space is just a good card though so but because we have four four of these dudes is gonna be pretty good and remember like post rotation just replace your ultra balls with uh four ultra space and you're fine right that's the idea um of course three cynthia we had to make cuts so cynthia had to go because we are now playing four welders four lilies because you still want to get that turn one lily if you can not to mention lily is just a pretty good card in this deck for the most part i like it a little bit more than i like cynthia only because you can add cards to your hand so it's really useful when you have cards like b-string in your hand that's why i'm choosing to play three cynthia four lily as opposed to the other way around i believe i'm only playing two guzma now because i just always blow up what's in front of me so guzma feels a lot less useful than it used to be and of course uh, one beast and 14 fire energies but that's gonna be the deck guys let's go ahead and get ourselves a couple of games hey guys welcome back uh once again internet cuts i'm very annoyed but it's fine we'll make it work gotta make a note though so i know where to put my crap back in so i don't have to take forever i, I lost internet for about 20 minutes i'm very like eh, right now but hopefully we don't that doesn't happen again so the cool thing about this deck is now when you go second you have access to welder which means you're going to usually attack turn one this hand is okay it's not the best I mean, we do have lots of ball search in our hands so that's pretty good we're playing against dragon is that like executor oh it's it's ultra necro um how do we be ultra necro nagas are good we want to attack with nagas uh so yes that's how we beat this deck we get our nagas and start attacking with them another ultra ball and another treasure a bunch of cards i did not want to see i don't know if i want to marsh shadow turn one because this deck has so many outs I might just welter turn one and just start playing poiples. Once again, this hand's actually not bad because we can march out of turn two. I think I will just start with a welder. And let's see what this does for us. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we want to get down three poiples. This is for a manual attachment. I guess that's what we're doing. I'm assuming my opponent's not going to march out on me. Um, so just get down a bunch of poiples. So we're not prized. Um, this is kind of awkward though. This is going to be really annoying for late game if we don't have a lot of ultra balls left. This is actually, mm, this might not be the best. This might not be the best at all. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much of what's in my hand, so I don't want to read in this turn. I'm just going to pass. I don't want to know I have like a bunch of Nagas in my hand. I might have to Ultra Ball a Naga for a Marsh Shadow. That's kind of the problem right now. But I can get down two Nagas and just hope. I could have Marsh Shadow turn one and shuffle all those balls. Right? So I don't know why my deck is clumping today. So in the game before the disconnect happened, it was versus Zapdos, right? And for some reason... Not only did I have five draw supporters prized, I also had Lele prized. So I don't know what the deal was there. Uh, the game went really well. I don't know who would have won because it was kind of like a toss up. Like he could have had Coco for game. Um, so that's the only reason why I wasn't super sure if I was going to win that game. I hit a small hand, but theoretically he could have got Coco for game. But then the disconnect happened. So, But regardless, we were down to one prize and we were like taking command. It's until the fact that we literally could not do anything because we didn't have any draw supporters. We had like two Lilies, no, two two Cynthia, one Lily and two Welders prize. And then we had Lele prize. So um, our opening few turns were really, really bad. So that was that game. All right. And then uh, before I started recording, I was playing a game on my own time. And I started my hand. What was my hand again? It was something ridiculous. It was like, it was like four stadiums. 
and it, it was it was just really dumb. <laughs> so for some reason, I'm having some clumping issues. But like today is the only day that's happened. So like it's it's not like I, I don't go to tournaments and clump. I don't go. Uh, I don't stream this deck in clump. Like we did a whole streaming session with this deck where we made the changes that we made today, and they were fine. But today it's just not as not going as well. He got he has Mew. I don't know why he grabbed Mew. I'm assuming just to discard it, right? Because like there's no reason to bench it. Yeah, here we go. Oh, Giratina. Interesting. Um, I mean Giratina is a good attacker in this matchup, but like I don't know why he got rid of Mew. Giratina is really annoying in this matchup, actually. Because like it just does too much damage. And like it's a non GX attacker. So and because of our lack of Guzmas in this deck, the only thing we can really do is just try to Oko it every turn. We can Oko it next turn, luckily, but we're gonna have to grab Marshadow, which sucks. I could just grab Lele instead. Lily for a few cards. Let me just start with this. Take a look what's going on here. Um You do have the beast energy. I would like to find what's it called? Um I don't think I want to march that. I don't want to give him more cards. I'm assuming he has everything he needs for next turn, right? But Marsha is kinda of like a sitting target, but then again, Lele is just a GX Pokemon, right? Marsha just dies to Ultra Necro. So we're gonna grab Lele instead. Ultra Necro is going to prove to be a problem this matchup if I'm not careful, so I, I need to avoid putting down Marsh Shadows, I think. We'll grab Lily here. And hopefully we can draw it into an energy to attach. So maybe I should have Welded later, but at the same time, I want to be able to draw out of the situation. So we'll see. That was really close. Um, yeah, my opponent was really banking on shenanigans there. We'll go ahead and take a knockout here. He doesn't have any Malamars yet, so ideally he can stay that way. I'm just, but like for every, essentially as long as he's not playing Shrine or like Spell Tag, for every two knockouts, for every two knockouts Bacephalon gets, um, Giratina gets one, which does, as long as we get the first knockout, does put us ahead in the prize trade. So that's not bad either. I could get down a third knock, a third Poipo right now, but I don't know if it's actually in the deck, so I'm actually going to hold off on that. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna hold off on that for the time being. For now, I'm just going to mind blown for knockout. It's three. Three is a lot. I have to try to quickly get these energies in the discard pile. Because th that's the problem. I have to keep up with the knockouts now. And I need to find Guzma as well. But we also have access to Burst GX, which is gonna be like an immediate prize as well. So it's not like we're, we're still gonna slow down the prize race. We still have access to decent cards. And once we find Beast Energy too, that's gonna make the whole scheme easier to deal with. There's another Beast Energy, Beast Ring. The... You know what this format needs? Specifically this deck, Trainer Mail. We need another broken card like Trainer Mail back in the format. Let me look at the top four and just grab Beast Rings. <laughs> I could actually cut a Beast Ring if, I, if that happened. <laughs> Plus like, it'd be so good in this deck. He's just gonna straight up whip out the alternate crossman now. I guess he's just gonna take an immediate knockout here, so that he trades well. So he needs to find two Marsh out of two Malamars. I mean, can he do that? He's on Lele and just hope for the best. I mean, he did use a few draw ball uh, ball searches already. Um, yeah, two treasures and an Ultra Ball. So I don't know if he can find both unless he just draws into them. And the question is, is he gonna use Lily or Cynthia? This does give us immediate access to um, Beast Ring, though, which means we won't be able to use Treasure and get a second Poi pull down, but we will immediately be able to. Uh... Does he just not have draw supporters in his deck? Like, what's going on? That's so weird. He could have just grabbed Erica. Why didn't he grab Erica? Why did he choose to grab nothing? What was his goal there? His goal was to find a better draw supporter? If you were going to make that Jirachi switch, but I don't really understand what he was going for. But regardless, that game looked like we won. <laughs> that game looked like we uh, had that in the bag. So we'll get another we'll get another game here. And I was hoping to play against some Reshi's art. That's what I'm hoping to play against, so I can show off the fire matchup. Because that's the big thing, right? Like we need like we need like five, right? 
We need six energies on the board to take an Oko and Reshizard, which is not actually that bad to set up. This hand is not great though. A couple of drop ball switches would help this hand a lot. We can drop a, I don't want to, maybe a beast energy or beast string, I mean. Definitely a fire energy. Um, but we're going first. We don't have to worry about using the Walter Tone. Buzz Mosa should be an easy matchup, right? I'm afraid of benching another one, but I, we're going to have to play Cynthia this turn, so. Um, yeah. Like, like I said, I mean, he could technically take a big Oko with uh, Elegant Soul this turn, thanks to Beast Strings. So maybe we should just Lily. I'm a little bit afraid, actually. I actually, this might have just spelled Terror for me. Maybe that was a misplay. I'm thinking that was a misplay, actually. Like a pretty big one, too. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think I misplayed, guys. I think I misplayed pretty bad. Okay, so the fear, right, is that he plays both Miss Drevis is down, uh, gets all the B-strings in the world thanks to Lieutenant Surge, and uh, sets up both Bacephalon's turn one. That's the big fear. Because if he sets up both Bacephalon's turn one, he Oko's my dudes. Because uh, they hit, you know, a lot, a lot. And he even doesn't have to even play, oh my god, he doesn't even have to play green to get them down. It's a lot to ask for, don't get me wrong. Because he needs to both have green. Oh, he has, what is his hand? <laughs> Guys, I think I lost. <laughs> if he, if he, if he, um, Prevy's up to the play, I definitely lost. If he knows to get down, because he can Lieutenant Surge, right? Oh my god. There's Beast Energy, <laughs> doesn't help me right now. Oh my god. I think I, oh no, he's prepping up to the play. This man's about to go off on me, isn't he? Choice man doesn't matter. Um, but Elegant Soul right now is a huge issue. Luckily, he can't play green until after he Mr. Visses. But he has Lieutenant Surge. Oh no, guys. Guys. Oh no. I think I lost. If he gets two greens, that's four B strings, and that's just pretty much game right there. Oh my good. Oh no. Oh no. Please don't set up both. Please whiff. Please whiff. I mean, it's not game actually, because I'm a non GX attacker, but it's still like really scary. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. We just gotta knock out two Bacephalons, right? They have 260 HP, which means we have to hit them for 150, so three energies at a time. Uh, B-String Manual Attachment will take care of this one. And there's another B-String, so he's gonna set up that one. Oh, no, not too sure why he grabbed the Nest Ball, though. Maybe to grab another Bacephalon, so he can retreat into it. But the fact that we... I was so confident that we didn't need any Poipoles that turn, but, like, that was a big misplay on my part. Okay, but he's attaching here. Not really sure why. Does he have switch? What's he doing? The only the other play he has is like getting a weakest policy, but that doesn't feel so. I don't understand this play. I guess to be no, his B strings will be inactive. Why did he do this? I'm so confused. Whatever, it's fine. Um, Ultra Ball is okay. It gives us another Bacephalon down, which is kind of what we want right now. So we can try to find another B string. So the goal right now is to find B strings. Okay, all right, well. Oh boy, okay. Um, I had to play that Bacephalon down so I didn't get donked, of course, but like, I wouldn't have known that <laughs> until after I played Lily. Anyways, um, that's fine. I don't know why I was panicking so hard. It's just one of those things where like, you could take a knock on both of them, which means I, I was like, I had to find everything I needed that turn. And the fact that, like, it's whatever. It's, it's still like Buzzmo, so we won that matchup. Let's play another game, shall we? You know, I'm only playing three Bocephalons, but I gotta say, we've been getting really lucky with leading, and we have Tormon Welder here, as well as Labs, and we just have, we have the works right now. I'm playing against Picaram too, so that could be useful depending on his lead. Um, um, does this matter? We won't be able to Oko this turn one, but we can at least damage it. Does that matter though? I don't know if it matters. Oh, we're playing against Reshizard. Okay, it might matter now. Alright, we need to get down a bunch of Poibles. I don't like using Welder on the active though. But I would like to Marsh Shadow, but that doesn't really matter if he plays Kiawe, right? Heat Factory helps me, so that's pretty good. And Heat Factory, and then bump it with Lysander Labs, I guess? Maybe we Weld it first, and then we Heat Factory. Although we don't, like I said, we don't really need to attack this turn to be active. Because um, we don't need to take a knockout on this, on this thing. What we can do, though, is we can GX turn 1, and then prepare this Lele to be knocked out in the future. After we knock out one Reshizard, we should be fine. Um, this Lele does not matter to me. And he also had a really bad start. Um, 
Hmm. I'm debating Mar using Mark Shadow right now. So, okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. Actually, this hand's pretty bad. Um, I would like to be able to weld her to a different Persephone. So let me heat factory first. We did not get a different Persephone. But we do have access to Lily this turn, which is not bad. We can get down. He's gonna take a knockout, which means B-String will be live after that. Um, do I want to Lily? Do I want to Heat Factor? I definitely don't want to Heat Factor right now. I'm thinking Lily is going to be the play. Labs does not matter enough or at all, really, because Choice Man doesn't really exactly <laughs> barely get him a knockout, you know what I mean? So I think I will drop, because I want to keep the welders in, welder and the energies in hand. Let me go ahead and drop a Labs to grab a Poi Pole. This, um, this, is this is a really hard play right now, because I don't know what the right play is. Um... <clears throat> As long as we keep one energy in hand, our dude is live. But the biggest concern right now is that I really want to get another Persephone down so I can just B-string onto it immediately and just try to find as many B-strings as possible on top of Welder. So I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to keep the Heat Factory on the board. And as long as he doesn't bump it, we should be fine, right? So here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Okay. Still trying to big brain. Still trying to practice this deck in the current format. So forgive me for any mistakes you might find. There's another Persephone, which is perfect. So we can B-string onto that immediately. The Poi is not bad. We have Ultra Ball to get us Marsh Shadow or Lele, depending on the situation. And I am just going to GX right now, because once again, if he doesn't <clears throat> retreat and attack me this turn with Reshizard, I can take a knockout on this and then just finish the game off versus a Reshizard. And we need to spend the next turn hunting for B-Strings. So we're going to B-String first, Heat Factory, Welder, and then Marsh Shadow. I'm assuming that's the, the, the sequence of plays. So we'll burst GX now. Here's a Fire Energy. That's pretty good. Uh, we're going to attach that to the Bench with Step 1. So that at least we'll always have one on the board. So that actually turned out that turned out even better for us. But anyways, I'm trying to show off the matchup right now. We need six on the board. So if we can get like six, if we can get three Nagas as well as one B string or just two B strings, manual attachment, uh, we need a few Nagas. We can pull this off quite nicely. My opponent's having a pretty rough start here, but like a rough start doesn't really matter as long as we get another Weldo this turn, right? It just means it doesn't really mean much. Like oh, he's gonna march out of me. That's fine. We did thin our deck quite a bit. We got three Poi Pulls down. He has Heat Factory on the board still. Once again, Choice Band does not matter. We are losing the B-String in our hand, but Marsh Shadow shouldn't affect us too much. We have too many outs to our own Marsh Shadow, our own Lele, for this for this to really matter. And he needs he's he's doing his best to find another Welder this turn. I'm assuming he grabbed the Skateboard there. It's fine. We want to knock this out for sure anyways, so... We re it really sucks that we're losing a B-string. We need to find the B- This is why we play four B-strings, by the way, guys. We need to find it. Uh, we got a Welder, a Poipole. Not much going on here. We're going to have to Heat Factory first, I think. Actually, I think we have the Welder first. That way we can guarantee a manual attachment at least. And uh, worst case scenario, we just... Can he even attack me? He can GX me. Oh, this might be a problem, guys. Uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> we got to draw to this. This is where Marsh Shadow is a problem. Marshall is a problem child, for sure. Um, yeah, we'll throw this down here in the active, because we definitely want to try to take a knockout this turn. Um, Ultra Ball is great. Ultra Ball gets us, like, a few things, actually. What do we want, though? One Welder into a B-String would be great. Um, but we still need a Naga, right? So before Ultra Ball, maybe I should Welder first, just draw as much as I can. Because whichever piece I get I get off the draw would be better than me ultra balling for it and then finding another piece of that later. So we're gonna welder first. I think this is the I think this is the right sequence of plays. Um, we did get Marsh Shadow, which means you don't have to ultra ball for Marsh Shadow now. We can bench this. We don't want to bench you though, because we might oh, actually maybe maybe benching that was wrong. We already played Lele though, but All right, there's one Naga. We just need to land a B string. Maybe welder was the wrong play. Maybe we could have grabbed like Lele or something. Alright, fuck me up, bro. There's a B string. So that's six energies, right? One, two, three, four. No, it's only that's six, yes, perfect. As long as we have one more in this card, right? Perfect, yes. Alright, we got our six. So we take a knockout here. And he does not have another Reshizard down or uh, or ability to GX attack again, so he won't be able to um he won't be able to take a knockout next turn as far as I'm aware, which means we're in a really good position. Especially if we get a B-string next turn. 
at six, so that should be 300 damage. Um, this is the one reason why I want to play Choice Band though, but Beast Energy kind of helps, and Lysander Labs just feels too good right now to not play. So 300, this will give me three prizes too, which could be useful for potentially energies for me to abuse Heat Factory with, uh, as well as Welder. Welder would be perfect if I can just find a single energy card. Beast Ring is great. Uh, we did give Radiant Forest, which means we can Welder as well, so we can definitely take some, a knockout next turn. So that's really good. Things are looking pretty good right now. Now we could have maybe, maybe instead of Welder, um, although Welder did guarantee that knockout for us, because otherwise we would have had to find two Beast Rings, which... I think Welder was probably the safer play still, because then we only had to find one. Because if we played Lily for a few cards, like six or whatever, four or five, six, we had to find two Beast Rings off of that. So we could have Lele, then Marshadow. We could have double Marshadow. So the reason why I say this is because maybe Benching as Persephone is not the best play. Um, and I could have spent that time uh, getting another draw supporter instead of playing Welder. But I think Welder was the safest play, so I'm gonna stand by it. The question is, what can he do this turn? He should not be able to attack me again with Reshizard because he did not have one setting up on the bench earlier. Uh, so no manual attachment onto it. He can only attach three and hit me for like outrage damage. Um, obviously he's gonna leave this Marshadow active to take the knockout. But if we can find a few B strings here, then we should be okay. I doubt he can't really play Guzman next turn. He has to play Welder. So I'm actually gonna B string onto the bench for Cephalon right here. Um, and I guess treasure for the last, for the last Naga. And we're not in a huge rush to... Actually, we are kind of in a rush to get energies. Hmm. We need to make sure we have a bunch of energies on the board. We don't really need to burst GX this. And I would like to get Guzma. So I'm debating if I want to drop the Heat Factory. But the Heat Factory helps me draw more and also gets energies in the discard pile. So let me go ahead and just do this. And, oh man. <laughs> That's not exactly the card I wanted to see right now. Um, We're not finding fire energies. Well, we did Beast... We did B string, so I guess that's the main reason why. No Guzma yet. If he takes a knockout, we can use cards like Lele and Marshall to get Guzma. He can't both Guzma and take a knockout this turn. I really am debating attaching an energy. We already bursted. Um, there's no point really attacking because he he's just going to be able to retreat anyways. Uh, I think we're just gonna pass here. Although Ultra Balling just to thin the deck so we can top deck something that's pretty good as well. Because there's no reason for us, for us to preserve any cards in our hand right now. So let me go ahead and just do this. Oh, I should hold on to one. But I don't want to lose anything else in my hand, so we're gonna do this. Those cards are pretty useless to me right now. We'll grab Marsh Shadow with it just to thin the deck and hopefully we can top deck something. We have a few energies in the deck we can find as well. So hopefully a Heat Factory can draw us out of this situation. Find us a few more cards and we're just gonna pass i think beast energy does mean we only need five energies on the board now so one more beast string or <clears throat> or just a couple more nagas is gonna be enough to do the trick not to mention welder can help us get energies and attach and attack and force this thing active so we have we have cards we can play here to win this matchup we just need to find fire energies now Phone keeps going off. I'm gonna go double check my phone, guys, because I'm getting a bunch of text messages and I don't know from who. It's probably from the group chat, but you never, you never, never heard the chat. Speaking of group chat, let me ask my buddies if they want to record any games today. See if anyone's free. Oh, it's Carlos. Hey, do you want to watch Pikachu? And also, will you make it to my party on the 25th? Yeah. I will. So it's Carlos. And. I'm busy today. Labs doesn't really help me. Maybe after three. Gotta check with my recording group. Okay, let me take a look at this. What can we do here? We can force a welder and just take a knockout, but I don't want to attach with beast energy. We'd have to find another energy card. So I hate that we're, we can force a welder, try to find an energy card, take a knockout on this active dude. Hmm. Sure. We're force, we're force, we'll, we'll force a welder. That could potentially give me a knockout. Cause he's gonna take a knockout next turn. He might even Guzma too. So I wanna make sure I have energies on the active. 
Okay, there's a energy. Hmm. That is double Naga if he takes a knockout on either Bocephalon. So I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to Bursting Burn. There's no point in me attacking, like I said. So no matter who he Guzmas, uh, we'll have two energies in the discard pile and then we'll be able to take a revenge knockout for game. Because we have Beast Energy in hand. Um, and then we have two Nagas in play. So I don't see him being able to come back in this game. There's a switch. Oh, he could have used switch whenever, huh? But once again, I just, once again, I think everything just worked out in our favor. Where's my music? There it is. And that should be game. Should be five energies. One, two, three, four, five. Technically it's six, but five with the beast energy. I don't know if they, if they fixed that glitch yet, but whatever. Um, it's all well played. See if he scoops. There it is. All right, so we beat, we beat Reshizard pretty handily. Uh, we beat tag team decks just really easily with this deck, thanks to Welder. Um, single prize deck matchups are still pretty difficult, but um, it kind of makes me want to play. Like, one card I've always wanted to play in this deck is Lacia because it can search for that beast energy for you, and you can get it with cards like Lele and it's a supporter. But the problem is you just don't, I don't have time to fit it in. Uh, but I've been recording for a while. I think like 25 minutes for you guys. It's been like an hour for me because of the whole internet fiasco. But um, this is the deck. I'm very happy with this deck list right now. It can beat Reshizard. Uh, it can deal with non-GX matchups, especially if you can find Beast Ring with Nagan Adele. You have a decent chance versus spread thanks to your Lysander Labs tech. And there's just a lot of good cards in this deck that can deal with cards. So I'm a huge fan of Lysander Labs. I'm a huge fan of all the stadiums. I, like, I think stadiums right now are just really well placed. Uh... But Cephalon is just a great attacker. And against non-GX decks, if you can chain it well, you can probably get like two knockouts for every one knockout they take on you. So the price trade shouldn't be that bad. Um, what are some other matchups to keep in mind? I guess Zorak is still always a deck. Zorak Gyarados, we had a problem with uh, playing. We had a problem playing against uh, against Gumball whenever he, he he played me. Like I pretty handily lost that game. I did lead the Dene in that game though, and I took out the Dene immediately. I just didn't feel like the Dene was super useful in this deck. And so far, I've been pretty happy with not playing the Dene. It hasn't. I haven't needed it, so no Dene for me. Mm, what else did I mention? Azora Gyarados is like the scariest, the, ser the scariest matchup just because it's a water-based attacker, <sighs> and like your Nagas can't do much. Spread because the Mew has been pretty handy. Also, Mew helps you versus Picarom because they can't GX your bench, which is really, really nice. Which means you can play Lele in that matchup and feel perfectly fine. A lot of the time, of course. Um, Stretcher does help you get that Lele back as well. Marsh Shadows are just a good card. Uh, Blacephalon, Baby Blacephalon. If you can Marsh Shadow them and it sticks, you win the game pretty much hands down. Especially if they don't get down a second Blacephalon and you can just donk them. Um, that's the biggest thing with this deck up, right? Is like, if you can, you can be Baby Blaze as long as you can... Do an early game Marsh Shadow and a late game Marsh Shadow. They do have to get rid of a lot of energies to take a knockout on you. So if you can like really, really hit them with a strong Marsh Shadow, you can win the game pretty easily, which is why I'm playing two and not just one. Uh, what are some other matchups? GX matchups are fine. Even like, even like a, actually it's a little bit more difficult, but Blastoise is a problem, is a, could be a problem if they pop off on you but most of the time they won't and then you'll be able to take a bunch of knockouts uh the only card i want to add back to this deck is probably a third guzma don't really know what i would cut for it though so i currently am not playing a third guzma but that is an option for you but as it doesn't be the deck guys i just really like this deck so i like to go off and think about all the matchups and stuff like that this is the current list i'm building let me know what you guys think in the comments down below don't forget to answer comment questions today don't forget to drop a like on the video if you have not already because i know you guys are proud members proud workers of the ore bomb industry I love you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.